So let me show you guys something kind of crazy. These two guns are pretty much the same. They're a little different, which we'll get into in a minute, but both of these cost $2,000 or more each. However, this one only cost $800. And my question to you is why? Now, before you answer that question, there's a few things you should know about these. All of these are capable of shooting the same caliber. All of these are capable of running the same type of magazine. If equipped with a brace or a stock, all of these can be folded and all of these can be fired in the folded position. There went $30. So in today's video, we're gonna be comparing three different AR pistols. We have the CMMG Descent, we have the Inkstat Arms UDP-9, then we have one that I put together for a heck of a lot cheaper. And what my goal in today's video is, we're gonna go over each one of these guns, do a little bit of a review on them, but then we're gonna compare and contrast these two. And then as we get towards the end of the video, I'm gonna show you three or four different setups that you can do yourself for literally 35% of the price. Before we go further, there's a couple things that you need to know regarding the review. Because I'm recording this about a month or so before the brace rule goes into effect, I might say some things that are outdated. At this time, it's now April, and nobody knows what's gonna happen with braces come May. However, with that said, I am aware that this video is not gonna publish until after that date. And so for the purposes of today's video, we won't be reviewing these with braces or stocks on them because currently these don't include braces. And honestly, any manufacturer that makes any type of AR pistol is no longer including braces with them. However, the only caveat to that is I've had these for about a year now and I've been doing thorough testing with them. And during my testing, I was using a brace and this is before all the brace stuff started becoming a thing really. And so. I don't have any shooting footage without a brace. Just keep those things in mind as we move forward. The second thing that you should be aware of, Angstat Arms CMMG and this one from a company called Matador Arms, they all sent these to me to create content with. Nobody paid me to make the videos, but just because I get something for free, that doesn't guarantee a positive review. And I know you guys that watch this channel often know that, but I don't consider getting guns for testing and review payment. And so I don't have any partiality to any of these brands based on money. I might have partiality based on what works for me the most, but I wanted to let you guys know that. The third thing you should know is I will be creating a parts list for everything that you see in this video. That way, if you see something you want to pick up for yourself and find ways not to pay full price. And I do predict that some of this stuff is going to sell out kind of quickly because the prices are quite nice. But the way you find a parts list is first link in the description. I'll also pin that link in the comment section for you as well. Now, unfortunately, when I post videos, things tend to sell out very quickly. So if you don't want to miss out on things selling out really quickly, the best way to avoid that is to hit the subscribe button and turn on all notifications. But even if you don't care about the parts list, I ask that you hit the subscribe button anyway. It doesn't cost you anything. And whenever you do hit the subscribe button on a particular video on YouTube, regardless of what channel it's on, the more times it gets subscribed, the more likely the algorithm is going to promote these videos to people who have never been exposed to gun content before. And that ultimately benefits the gun community as a whole. And I ask that you not only do it for my channel, but I ask that you do it for any 2A channel that you watch. Make sure you're subscribed to them because that definitely helps us get the word out and to make 2A lifestyle more commonplace. Now, anytime I'm going to buy a product or review a product, I ask myself the same three questions. Number one, what problem will this product solve in my life? Number two, is the problem big enough in my life to warrant the price? And thirdly, does solving this problem create another problem? Now, I'll be the first person to tell you I love AR pistols. And I even love 9mm AR pistols like this one here called the CMMG Banshee. And the reason that I like them is it maintains all the same controls as a standard AR-15. However, I'm able to go to the range or go to a training class and I'm able to shoot and train for a lot cheaper than I would with a rifle calibered round. All of the mechanics are the same, doing mag changes, cha fixing reloads, it's all the same. And so I can practice for cheap, but then when things hit the fan, I'm able to apply those to a larger rifle that will actually get the job done. Additionally, like a nine millimeter or a 45 ACP, some people argue that they're good for home defense because you can fill them with hollow points. And then if someone 
breaks into your home trying to cause you harm and you have to put bullets in them, you have a less likely chance of over penetration with hollow points than you do with say a 5.56 or a 2.23 or a 300 blackout. And so some people feel much safer with a pistol caliber carbine for something for home defense. However, you know, when you go to something that's really small, one thing that we like about these is how lightweight and compact they are. They're gonna be more accurate than a handgun, but they're gonna be less accurate than a rifle. And so it's kind of a good in-between for people. But then people were like, you know what? I wanna be able to fold them. And so that was kind of cool for a while. And then people were like, you know what? I wanna be able to shoot them while I'm folded. And that's how we end up where we are today with this gun and this gun. Now, the other benefit, when they get to be this size, you can carry them in a backpack and or you can carry them in your truck on the back of the seat with some kind of mount system and they don't take up too much room. So the first gun that I got last year was the CMMG Descent. And to put it simply, it's kind of like the Banshee but in a bufferless version that you can shoot while folded. And it's a lot more expensive. Now, one thing that CMMG is kind of known for, especially with their nine millimeters, is having something called radial delay blowback. I'm not gonna get into the weeds on this, but essentially with direct blowback ARs, CMMG noticed that the bolt would unlock before the projectile is completely out of the barrel, which would result in lower velocities of the round. And so they created the system that makes a microsecond delay on the bolt that way the round can completely exit and get its full advertised velocity. But a byproduct of radial delay is they have a much softer recoil impulse. Now this one in particular doesn't have it because it's 300 blackout, but all of their nine millimeters have them. Currently the Descent can be had in a few different flavors, all of which have last round bolt hold open. It can be had in three different barrel lengths, six and a half inch, 10 and a half inch, and 16.1 inch. And it can be had in nine millimeter, 5.7, 300 blackout, and 5.56. Between those different variations, there's different magazine compatibilities that you can get. You have this one, which is a 300 blackout, which is gonna take your standard AR mags. The 5.56 is the same, but then when you get to the pistol calibers, like nine millimeter, you have a couple of different magazine options. You can get one that's similar to this guy that takes Glock mags only. You can get one that takes Sig Sauer P320 mags, or you can get the one that has the nine millimeter conversion mag that works with standard lower receivers. They come in, I believe, seven or eight different colors. We got colors like gray, we got like a cobalt blue, we got silver, and then black, obviously. And I think they got like a burnt bronze and an FDE. And then my favorite is Putina. That thing is sexy. Now, what makes this one different from the CMMG Banshee is a few different things. Number one, it has a non-reciprocating side charging handle, and this handle is ambidextrous. It can be switched to the other side. Also, you're gonna have some kind of muzzle device on the ones from CMMG. Used to in the olden days, when they came out with their first round of Banshees, you could choose to get a muzzle device or you could get a thread protector. But all of these come with some kind of muzzle device. This one has a linear comp, but I know that some of the other larger uppers have different muzzle devices. This one is a lot more upgraded than the CMMG Banshee though. This one, you're gonna have a Trigger Tech, it's two stage, four pound trigger in there. It's called the ARD. It's a Trigger Tech trigger that's made specifically for CMMG. And you're also gonna get enhanced controls on the lower receiver. You're gonna get an ambidextrous 4590 safety and it does come in the 45 degree setup. If you wanna change that, you can swap it around. Uh, the one thing I love about the safety though is on the offhand side, the safety is much flatter than the other side and it's shorter. So it doesn't get in the way of hitting your trigger finger when you're trying to engage and disengage the safety. It does have an extended magazine release. Not only that, but the magazine release is also ambidextrous. In addition to that, you also have an enhanced bolt catch slash bolt release. On the scale, this one came in at five pounds on the nose and that is the same for the nine millimeter variant of the same size in the six and a half inch barrel five pounds on the nose, which I kind of felt was a little bit heavy for something this small. Heck, I even have an AR-15 that's a 13.9 pin and welded that's lighter than this. Kind of weird, huh? Now all that's kind of cool, right? But I think the coolest thing that CMMG did with their Descent line is they created their own little ecosystem. What do I mean by that? If you get the version that has the full size magazine, like say you bought the nine millimeter and you got the one that works with PMAGs, you can get any of the other Descent uppers and they will all fit onto the same lower. And you could get one of every caliber and every length. And all you do is just use a different mag for each. 
Now, if you get the one that works with P320 mags, or if you get the one that works with Glock mags, you don't really have that advantage. But it is kind of cool to see that they created this little ecosystem. Now, I will say this one was a pre-production model. And so when I first got it, I had a couple of problems with it. The first time I took this to the range, I couldn't get it to shoot. And something I wasn't aware of until after that range day was it has an adjustable gas block that you can adjust right up here. So after I figured that out, I took my Allen wrench with me to the range and I adjusted the gas block and I got this thing running very well. The ejection pattern was consistent. It was just as accurate as I could be, but I didn't shoot it at long distances. So keep those things in mind. However, after a few hundred more rounds, I lost the adjustment screw for the gas block and it wouldn't work anymore. All right, had a failure of some kind. Failure to load. No oh, failure to load. <laughs> Still doing it. I lost the adjustment screw for the, for the gas block. So I contacted the guys at CMMG and said, hey guys, what's going on here? Can I get another screw? So I sent it in to them and they actually contacted me back and said, hey, you know, I know you got the pre-production model. Your gas port hole was undersized. And so that's why you had to loosen it up all the way. And essentially what had happened was I loosened it so far that it backed out. And so you shouldn't have to loosen them up that much. So they replaced the barrel with the production model that has the correct sized gas port, replaced that screw, and it's been running really reliably ever since. Shortly after I got the descent, Angstat Arms sent me their UDP-9. Now, I don't know how many of you guys are OG subscribers from like 2017, but Angstat Arms was one of the first companies to ever give me the opportunity to do a nine millimeter AR build on the channel. And so I, I do have some partiality towards them because of that, but don't worry, it won't affect my opinion on this. Similar to the CMMG, this one can accept Glock mags. It's also side charging, and that side charger is ambidextrous. This one also has a muzzle brake on it, but this one has a tri-lug quick detach for suppressors if you're using tri-lug adapters. This one also has their own version of a delay system called radial delay blowback. Yep, yeah, that's a mistake there that I made. I call it a verbal typo. I didn't even realize that I said radial delay but what I meant to say was roller delay. And I really wasn't planning on going into a ton of detail about this, but since I made the mistake, let's just cover it real fast. This is the Angstat Arms upper, and I don't have the CMMG Descent in a radial delay blowback format, so I'm gonna have to show you with their standard uh, buffered version, but they both accomplish the same thing. They just kind of go about it a different way. Roller delay blowback is kind of old, um, a lot of different guns use them, HKs, Strybogs, um, I think the SIG MCX uses it, and so does the Angstat Arms UDP-9. All it does is creates a microsecond delay when this is opening up, like I mentioned earlier in the video. So if you look at this bolt here, there's two parts to this bolt. There's a part here, and then there's a part up here where my pinky's at. And I'm gonna pull back on the handle here, and you're gonna notice that the back part is gonna move a little bit before the silver part. See what I mean? Right there. 
That right there creates your delay. On each side of the silver part of the bolt, uh, there are two rollers. You can actually see them quite well, but I will take this out so you can see it up close. So you can see right here, there's a roller on this side and there is a roller on this side. And on the inside of the upper here, right in here, there's a semicircular groove here and there's a semicircular groove on this side as well. And that those two rollers that are in this bolt fit into there and then as it opens up, they collapse into the bolt so that the bolt can cycle. On radial delay, it's simply spring tension. I would say that radial delay is probably done much simpler than roller delay, but this is a bolt carrier group from the CMMG Banshee, not the Descent. The Descent bolt carrier group is probably gonna look similar to this, but because I have a 300 blackout, not a nine millimeter, mine's not radial delay. This has a spring in it. And so when this is all the way in battery, when this starts to unlock, the carrier is going to move back first just a little bit, and then the bolt itself will back out of the chambering. Now, when you look at a standard bolt carrier group, you'll notice that it looks almost exactly identical to the radial delay bolt carrier group. And this one doesn't have a spring, and you're probably wondering, well, why does this one? And that's because the nine millimeters are not gas operated. They are blowback in nature. So all that means is they're using the energy from the round to blow back the bolt. You'll notice here, there's not a gas port right here. It's just a dummy gas port to, for an ex, as an example. And since there's no gas to go back down into here to push the bolt back out, they have to have a spring. So if you look at like a standard bolt right here, the gas comes back into here, goes into these chambers and then pushes this back out. For the purposes of today's video, that's the difference between the Angstat Arms roller delay and the CMMG radial delay. Delay blowback really reduces the recoil impulse of the gun. And this one is no exception. This thing shoots incredibly flat, which we'll get to when you see the shooting footage. Another advantage that this one has over, say, if you got a nine millimeter variant of the Descent, is this one is a 1.3 pounds lighter. This thing comes in at 3.7 pounds. And you can really feel it in the hand because most of the weight on this one is out front. And most of the weight on this one is pretty well evenly distributed. Comes with a B5 systems grip, and then all of the controls and the trigger are a little underwhelming because unfortunately they're just mil spec. Uh, with the exception of the magazine release, which it has two different buttons depending on your finger length so you can depress them easily. The upper receiver on this one is much different than the one on the Descent. The one on the Descent is an upper receiver and then an external handguard. This one is a monolithic upper. Um, that really adds to the rigidity of the platform. And also it allows you to have a very nice continuous Picatinny rail along the top. So you don't have any restrictions on where you can mount the optics. Another thing that I noticed on the UDP-9 versus the Descent is the UDP-9 has a QD point right here for a sling. And this one doesn't have any QD points anywhere on the gun that I could find for a sling. So just something to keep in mind. I wanted to make sure that I did a thorough test on this gun because when this came out, a lot of gun tubers were quick to get their videos out and a lot of people had problems. I know that Sage Dynamics had problems with it. And I know that John from the Gun Collective had problems with it. And I think there was a couple of others. And so I wanted to test it even more so to make sure that if it had problems or not. So I've got 1500 rounds through this guy and I was told by the owner to only use OEM Glock mags because he designed it with tighter tolerances. However, I've tested it with a bunch of different mags and here's some of my results. Okay. Locked open on the last round.
locked open. Locked open. open again. No red dot, but... Again. Now, over the course of those 1500 rounds, I had two malfunctions and they both came from the same Glock magazine. Okay, so that one I had a failure. It just didn't lock open on the last round. But two out of 1500 is not bad. And it only happened with one mag. In every other mag that I tried, I tried them with hollow points. I tried them with round nose. I tried them with 124 grain, 115 grain. Everything fed reliably for me. Now, keep in mind, I have a sample size of one. Sometimes on YouTube, I have the opposite experience of everyone else. So I can't say for sure how reliably these are as a whole, but mine has been 99% reliable. But then we come to the crux of this guy, and that's gonna be the price tag. These are currently $2,500. You can only get one barrel length. You can only get one type of magazine to use. Mil-spec trigger, mil-spec controls. It makes you wonder, is it really worth the crap compared to the Descent? Because aside from the price, it has a few things working against it. They don't have any type of ecosystem of uppers that you could put on here. It's just this. You can either get it as the pistol or you can get it as an SBR that has a folding brace. So you don't have the option to convert it to a rifle caliber for later if you wanted to. Additionally, this one only comes in three colors, black, flat dark earth, and gray. However, here's the problem I'm running into. Although both of these ran 100% reliably, you know, given our extenuating circumstances of having a pre-production model, and then this one having the two mount functions, these have been great. These have performed exactly as advertised, and I like them a lot, but I don't like them $2,000 a lot. And, and just to be completely honest, and I don't mean any disrespect to any companies, but earlier in the video, I was talking about how much are you willing to pay to solve a problem? And personally for me, $2,000 is too much money for me to have a foldable AR that I can shoot while it's folded. I mean, heck, for $2,500, you could go get a complete Zenith MP5 clone with tons of magazines and a big old case for the same exact price. And so if you want roller delay, you could always go that route. Now that all brings me to this guy. A few months ago, the people at Matador Arms sent me this upper receiver right here. And this upper receiver, is nine millimeter and it comes in two different lengths. You can get five and a half inch and you can get 7.83 inches. I know that's a really wonky number, but that's what it is. This one doesn't have any type of delay in their blowback. This is a direct blowback, which means your bolt might unlock a little bit early before your projectile leaves the barrel. I don't have the high speed cameras to test that, but it's possible. And this one has a little bit more recoil with it. This one is most like the UDP-9 because this one has a monolithic upper. This one does have a non-reciprocating charging handle that can be switched to either side. And this will work with a ton of different types of magazines. You can make this work with Glock magazines. You can make this work with P320 magazines. You can make this work with cold stick mags, or you can make this work with the Mean Arms Endo Mag, which is essentially mag guts that allow you to have a loused round bolt hold open and shoot nine millimeter. Don't worry, I'll have more info over at the parts list for you. You can also make this work with HK MP5 mags and CZ Evo Scorpion mags. So as long as you could fit the correct lower to it that you accept those mags, you're good to go. Now, currently these uppers are only available in two colors, FDE and black. However, if you look closely, 
you're gonna notice something very interesting about this upper. I don't know how aware you guys are, but Brownells just released their BRN9 upper receiver. You're gonna notice that these are almost identical. And that's because Matador makes the BRN9 uppers. Um, there are a couple of like physical differences, but the BRN uppers are essentially the same thing, except they only come in black and they only come in a five and a half inch barrel length. All right, locked open, very first mag using Indomag. Choke up on the Ingstat lower. Looks like it was a stove pipe. Although it is an OEM. Alright, nope, had another stove pipe. Alright, that mag was perfect. Oh, did not lock open on the last round. Did lock open on the last round. All right, so the OEM mag was the one that jammed up on us. I'm gonna try two more rounds just to see. All right, it locked open. I don't know. I'm using PMC bronze. Who knows? And this brings me to the part where I'm gonna show you cheaper configurations than the first two that we looked. And all of these configurations kind of have pros and cons kind of depending on what you're looking for. Let's pretend you're the kind of guy that's like, dude, I really like the ecosystem that the CMMG Descent has, but I just don't wanna spend $2,000 on it. How can I do that and save approximately 300-ish dollars? Well, get a PSA Jackal lower. These are about 250 bucks. And CMMG sells all their uppers separately. So you could buy one of each length or one of each caliber, and you can simply put it on a Jackal lower and go to town. And the reason I specifically bring up the Jackal lowers is because they have this extended piece of pick rail here. What that does is it keeps pressure on this recoil system so that it'll function correctly. But if you were to run it like this configuration, you could essentially run any CMMG upper on here. And as long as you're using conversion magazines, you can still get last round bolt hold open with your nine mil. If you wanted to get the 5.7 upper, you just get the 5.7 magazines. They also fit in there and you're good to go. Or you could shoot your standard 300 blackout or 5.56. So in this configuration, it's about $300 cheaper. However, there is a drawback to it. You're sacrificing all the cool enhanced controls of the lower receiver and you're sacrificing this really nice trigger. And that trigger alone is about $235. So is it worth that? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but that is one way that you could participate in the CMMG Descent ecosystem for less money. However, there's one big downside to this setup. The downside is you can only run bufferless uppers on here because you get this big old plate in the rear. Keep that in mind because we're gonna cut, we're gonna solve that problem in a minute. Now your next configuration could be a Jackal lower and the Matador Arms upper, an Endo mag last round bolt hold open. And if you don't care about the ecosystem or if you don't care about radial delay blowback, this whole thing can be had for like 800-ish dollars. I mean, that's a heck of a lot cheaper than two grand, to be honest with you. And in fact, you could still afford to upgrade the trigger, put enhanced controls in here, and you're still gonna be at a thousand bucks maybe. I mean, you could keep it under a thousand dollars 
easily. So that's definitely uh, something to think about, especially if you don't care about the ecosystem. But moreover than that, you could also get jackal uppers and run them on there. It's totally up to you. But going back to the con I had before, maybe you're the kind of person that's more like me, where it seems cool to shoot something that's like a bufferless upper. But I'm the kind of person that I like things to be modular. I like to be able to adapt things to what I want to do. And maybe I want to use the same lower, shoot something that's bufferless, but then switch to something that's buffered. How can I do that? And that's where this guy comes into play. Please forgive the unfinished lower, but this lower is a build that I'm gonna be doing in the future, so it's unfinished. This is a lower receiver that has an integrated folding mechanism. And let's say you wanna shoot a rifle caliber or even a pistol caliber that uses a buffer tube. Well, you get the buffer tube on it, now you can shoot it. Bing, 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 bing. All right, cool. But then you're like, you know what? I would like to get a bufferless AR to shoot on here as well. Well, got that as well. You can get one of the Matador uppers, put it on here. You could shoot it like this, or you could fold it and shoot it like this. This is a folding lower from Shield Arms that I picked up. They also make the 17 and design lowers. They're essentially the same thing. But this is cheaper than getting a strip lower and then buying like a Law Tactical folding adapter. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can definitely do a folding adapter, but this is a nice integrated design. But anyways, when everything's all said and done with like this lower, and let's say you wanna complete it with a buffer tube, or you know, maybe you wanna make a rifle out of it, it's totally up to you. You know, get the endo mag so you can shoot nine mil, all that stuff. When everything's said and done before any type Types of codes or anything that you apply to make it cheaper, it's only about a thousand and sixty bucks. And so essentially what this guy, what you could do is you could go to the range, you could practice with your nine mil, get your practice in, get your reps in, do your reloads, you know, and then you could switch it back to say like a 300 blackout upper that's buffered and you can apply those same skills to this and you use the same exact lower as you did for the other. Now, to be honest with you, there's a ton of different ways that you could do this. Like you could go get the Law Tactical folder, you could get the Law Tactical ARIC, a bolt carrier group that allows you to shoot the guns while folded. I just wanted to go over a couple of different configurations and I'll have all the links over at the parts list for you so you can check it out in the different configurations and I'll have ways to not pay full price for things. So keep those things in mind. But at the end of the day, it just comes down to this. I think that this and the Descent are just overpriced for what they are. They don't solve the problem well enough, at least for me, in order for me to actually go out and spend my own money on it. Not that they're bad, they're just expensive. Well, that's what I think. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below, guys. And until next time, I love you, and you guys stay sexy.